Welcome to the Bold Analysis. There was no coincidence that the day William Samuel Ruto formed the Commission of Inquiry on the Shakahola Forest Massacre, it was formed alongside the uh, Reverend Mutava Musimi Commission, or the task force, to chair um, religious organizations' uh, legal framework in the wake of the Shakahola massacre. And I remember having a very uh, peer discussion by saying that the two are actually pointing towards the same direction. They are working on the same mission. Ladies and gentlemen, the photo in my right, if I'm not wrong, is a photo of William Bruto uh, praying in the Jerusalem wall. This famous royal wall, I think there is also a photo of even Dry Lodinga praying there. And I think by then, um, we called uh, some Kenyans called royal names. And then we've also seen William Rodge going there, praying for the country, I think so. Back home, we have a heated debate about what looks like witch hunt against televangelist Pastor Ezekiel Odero. This is against some of which, some Christian values. You know, um, I want to delve deep into this matter. The Shaka Holland massacre has been hacked by the state operatives and clearly is being used as a ground to collect critical intelligence that will form the next course of action. The more questions than answers. And at this point, let me remind you of a question that uh, I asked the last time I analyzed about this thing and I have not got an answer. How the church against Pastor McKenzie turned the whole discussion to be Ezekiel Odero is something that uh, it's a book that we may have to read in future because the person who was at the dock was McKenzie. But as we talk, if you even check media reports, you will realize that Ezekiel, the son of Homabe, is trending more than even that Mackenzie. I don't want to go further because I don't want to profile the two men of God. Now, on the other hand, Kindiki has insisted that uh, Shakahola is a scene of crime and what according to him is a syndicate, a well-coordinated syndicate. And I'm not an expert, but logically, what that means is that the crime of sin is Shakahola and not Mavweni Church nor uh, Ezekiel Odero's bank account. Ladies and gentlemen, after the drama about reopening of the church, I have listened to some uh, uh, a clip, a soundbite from the two lawyers, Mbeta, Cliff Mbeta and Dunstan Omari, on how the state played some hide and seek games when they were seeking the orders to freeze the accounts of the televangelist. And they had to come, I think, to a Nairobi court to get those orders. In what lawyers came out to say that it was a bit, it was a malicious move. I got it and uh, I wanted to listen to both sides. It's a bit of a lengthy clip, but at the end it will give you a picture of what exactly is playing out here. So what do they do? They go and now make sure that the students will not go to school. Why? Because they have frozen the accounts of the school. Totally. They have frozen the accounts of the church. They have frozen the accounts of the pastor. At least if it is the pastor you wanted, you could have frozen his accounts. Anybody else by extension who benefits or does work for the church and the school is now locked out. Were they given a chance to respond? It did not happen. The state has not acted in good faith. Whoever is behind this case against Pastor Ezekiel and the church has by extension injured and damaged the children. 
money laundering ya nini sadaka tangu lini ikakuwa legislated ya kwamba mtu asipeane sadaka shilingi zaidi ya mia moja. Tunajua serikali ina hamu ya kupandisha ushuru, serikali ina hamu ya kujua pesa zako zinatoka wapi. Leo hii serikali sasa imesema inataka kuchunguza wale waliowahi kupea sadaka Ezekiel walizipata wapi? Tumeweka an application ya kwamba sisi tuataka kuangalia haya na maombi ambayo tutasonga ni kwamba yale yaliyofanywa zile orders zilizofanywa pale Nairobi ile file iletwe hapo under article 165 ya the jurisdiction of the high court kumbuka high court inasikiza sauti ya court of appeal peke yake haisikizi sauti ya magistrate Mukiangalia zile order nimezowapatia ule magistrate aliyepeana hizo order jina lake halimu There are three questions we have to look at in the context of this account freezing Now but let me look at some interesting some data here The total number of bodies exhumed so far after it was uh, after the process the operation was resumed imagine initially it was told and media were actually banned from uh, uh, accessing blocked from accessing it and even other sh uh, you know other leaders uh, that's why Rail was blocked from going there but after it was resumed 144 bodies totally has now been um, uh, exhumed Mackenzie who was the main man in the, uh, uh, in the whole thing Uh, detectives are still holding him for are still um, maintaining on holding him for 23 more days while the investigation is still going on while Ezekiel is out on bail but moving further the investigators have got and are now spying on the televangelist accounts and in what they have I have even seen this evening there is another report that said that since 2012 has not filed returns and you know the church is i think is registered as a society or something and uh if you want to know that uh it borders you know himself uh, Ezekiel himself there is a, i think there is a, this audio clip that i want to get himself explaining uh, what exactly investigators are looking for mtu anauliza pastor kama kulifungwa accounts tunatoa wapi si ndio si mlikisikia account zimefungwa Pasta mutalala nja hapana tumepanda mahindi mimi na pasta sara sijui hapo wapi tumepanda mahindi tuko na mboga na tuko na mbuzi tuko na kuku mtu anauliza pasta kama kulifungwa accounts tunatoa wapi si ndio si mlikisikia accounts zimefungwa unatoa hapo hapo kuingia inaingia kutoa mimi ndio sitoi ndio angalau wajue mahali zinatoka yes si hivyo ni vizuri yes. okay nisikie mwanangu wewe ni mwana wa new life ulisikia accounts zimefungwa ni sawa sisi ndio hatuwezi toa na ni vyema that video is courtesy of uh, swift media It's amazing uh to be can also check out his channel it's always good to attribute now um at this point i want us to look at these three questions that i've really been i've really been thinking about number one is this i saw the dorcas pastor dorcas regarding the wife to the gadigeshago and even to gadigeshago himself a position holding a position of defending the church and i do believe that um, the position of the uda administration is that we cannot clamp down churches because of one criminal element totally i think i'm getting that position clearly because that is what has been out that because of one person we cannot clamp down the churches so if it is Pastor, if it is Mackenzie, it should be Mackenzie himself, and not even his wife or his mother or children should be dragged in it. That's what 
If my memory serves me right, that is what Pastor Dorcas said. But why, and uh, one thing you would actually see here is, the, immediately the Shakahola story came out, uh, there was profiling, negative profiling of the church as something I didn't really support. Then you saw the members of the clergy and representatives from different sectors ganging up to defend the church about it. But immediately now this moved now to freezing and spying on accounts. The discussion ended there and they're not really supportive. No more comment about this. Maybe it's not important. But the second question is very important. This is what I'm looking at. Um, in this issue, we have seen um, um, investigators trying to dig deep and spy, or rather to do a lifestyle audit on Pastor Ezekiel. I think as we talk now, everyone knows Ezekiel has an international school in the same compound, some bank and some great investments in Mavuin. Some of us were not, did not know, but so far, we've seen that lifestyle audit. Now, in the same measure of um, looking at what's going on, why aren't we seeing a lifestyle audit on Pastor Mackenzie? Oh my goodness, I need, to answer that. I need to ask that question again. There is a lifestyle audit on Ezekiel. Why aren't we seeing the same lifestyle audit on Pastor Mackenzie? Now, the third question came from, um, you know, those are just questions you just need to think around. That question came from uh, a gentleman, a very good friend, who I should not mention the name, yeah, works with the Kilifi County government. He told me that, Kevin, we have so many churches in Kilifi that are Pentecost. Of course, Kilifi is dominantly a Muslim. Muslims are many. But there are so many other churches, other Pentecostal churches, there, apart from that of of Ezekiel. In fact, the whole county, there are quite other big churches or even other churches with branches there. But what was the rationale of narrowing down to only Pastor Ezekiel? If this issue was supposed to be about auditing the churches in Cliffy, it should be about all the churches there. But how did the investigators narrow down to Pastor Ezekiel? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Ezekiel has become a point, a person of interest, and um, Shakahola Massacre just offered an entry point. I'm seeing us trying to create a lot of variations, uh, a lot of discussions on it, but this is the truth. The intel of spying in Ezekiel to Ezekiel, uh, Pastor Ezekiel's accounts, from my, where I'm seated, is just trying to dig deep and understand how best the state can impose the church tax. The church tax is something that is happening. I was just reading another, uh, there was another research, I think in, 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 in Europe, there is church tax. Yes, I know you, for those of us, those members who are abroad, you can tell us that you understand this is something that there are some countries that are doing it. As this is going on, we have a discussion about finance bill. And in finance bill, Kenyans have been asked to show how they can improve the taxes. The truth here is, looking at the kind of investment that Ezekiel has and what the media reports, maybe the accounts are ballooned. You know, he has very fat accounts, probably. I'm not privy to it. But this is a discussion that is long overdue. The tragedy that might befall is when it it actually develops into a policy the policy will not be selective on whether <laughs> it will not be selective on each church it will cut across so when the churches and and some religious organizations have taken political leaning or rather are silent because of political correctness but this is just a ladder to move to a policy i can tell you Immediately, the report of inquiry and the other task force that is led by Reverend Mutava Musimi, they will all harmonize and reconcile into 
some sort of a policy that will look like regulating the churches. But remember, any regulation by church has a cost implication to it. If it's about registration, someone will introduce about registration cost. Remember before who left, he tried to lift it. So that is one aspect I'm seeing. That's one of the main reasons. And that is my punchline why he is actually a point of interest. But I want to bring something to attention. Raila raised, Raila visit raised eyebrows about that. And I think, of course, that he could be getting some uh, support from the polit, some goodwill from the political class. You know, one thing that is emerging is that this church is a focal point to consolidating perhaps Kilifi or the larger coastal vote. And this could have just been a push, you know, sometimes you're pushed to the wall so that when it comes, people tell you that for you to get this reprieve, you might need to get, uh, you may need some conformity with the political kingdom. And I will not be shocked to hear another day or sometime to understand that uh, is really dancing to the tune of you, the administration, to get it. It's not something out of the moon. Politicians have got their way by just crossing over and supporting the administration of the day. Now, um, Ezekiel is suffering from some church gang. You know, there could be other gang that are ganging against him. Because looking at the kind of uh, stature he is, uh, I don't want to believe, you know, I don't want to believe. There are also those who feel my probably is a threat. And his threat profile over this growing profile. You know, the truth is, they are in this country for the first time, we, we had the clergy in the decision-making table. And they should, this, in fact, this matter should have been an underground thing. If this would be some church in Roisambu here, I'm a let's say somewhere in Limuru here, I, let's say the truth, it, you, won't, you won't have seen what you're hearing now. This thing would have been sorted somewhere underground. And, you know, you would not have seen that much of the profiling. So, he might have also been suffering from just within. It could also be a spiritual uh, warfare. Lastly, I think, we are creating a crisis from Shakahola, and we are just trying to move the crime scene from Shakahola to a church somehow because that's where it's fat and that's where we can regulate you know we can get something i i someone asked me so even if you investigate shakahola and what 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 is the end goal the end game here is you need to get to regulate how churches are regulated now for you to regulate a church there's no church in shakahola but then let me tell you the church in shakahola i saw uh, by mckenzie i think a video saying that he had been closed to get a deep understanding the intelligence wants to know at what extent? And you will hear politicians now being told, you want to know, how do Kenyans give? How are they giving? And I can tell you, the churches are going to be taxed. It's a matter of wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet in the next. The Anglican bishop is saying something very interesting and uh, I want us to look at that.